There's a factory on the outskirts of Dundee. Rounded grow the fields of Smedley's Peak. What was it like for you managing an atlas? <laughs> well, it, it was a title, that was all. It was a title. I got you I got you into concerts and places for nothing, you know, because you <laughs> I think, you it, went, I, think it's, I think it's still a title. <laughs> you went, you, well, I mean, I mean, in the early days, you went to the railway station and for half a crown, which two and sixpence, two shillings and sixpence, just be 12 and a half pence. And you got 25 business cards you typed on and you had 25 business cards. So if you put the title, if you got the right title on it, you know, and, uh, you know, if you put the right title in, you could turn up at almost any cut. So I went and won and saw the, all the big names, you know, Kenny Ball, Hacker Bill, all these jazz people. And, of course, you know, I'm, I'm an agent, so I got in backstage and that's how I got to know them. And then I opened <laughs> jazz clubs. So, so, you know, it was, I mean, if you want to do a thing, and come on, you're an expert at this. If you want to get somewhere, <laughs> you think up oh, we are getting in there. No, oh, sure, sure. So, so I mean, so I mean, at that point in time, Josh's careers went really well. Is that when you decided what Nichols going to start making folk records then? No, 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 it came along after that. No, no, when 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 I was working with Josh. He was, it was quite unique. There was Josh McRae, there was a guy called Steve Benbow, who was his English equivalent, and then there was Robin Hall and Jimmy McGregor. Jimmy had come from the skiffle world. Robin, Robin was an intellectual, and, uh, and they, they were on the Tonight programme, way, way back then, in the Tonight programme, every night. And, and, uh, so, and they were, if you'd asked anybody, name a folk singer, they would have looked like you came for the moon. And these were the guys that was, you know, but all of a sudden, all of a sudden we get, you know, like in, in, in music generally, so all of a sudden everybody's talking about heavy metal. You know, oh, I'm into heavy metal. You know, and you go, what the hell is heavy metal? I mean, is that, is that something you keep calling or something? It was, it meant nothing, but it meant a lot to them. So all of a sudden there was people who emerged in, in Josh's way, Hamish Shimlach being, uh, and, and possibly Archie Fisher, they came right in the wake of Josh, in my opinion. Now, I've had conversations with them about that, and uh, they were saying, oh, we were there. We were there at the same time as Josh, but Josh got the reputation. He was the first one to become a household name. Uh, and and um, but you know Mark McGinn, for instance, was a very very different kind of folk singer because he didn't accompany himself, so he he sang unaccompanied, and and wrote his own songs. I mean I, I was I was gobsmacked with Mark when when I met him. Mark and I got, we didn't always agree. You understand? We were no. both reasonably aggressive in our attitude, but we both quite admired each other because we wrote songs. These other pussy cats that had to play a guitar to sell it. We could do it with a guitar, you know. That was, that was, that was a attitude, you know. But but uh, and then of course there were there were people. You and McCall, he came from. He was the he was the big he bummer in the traditional scene, where it had to be copied. But boy, did he write some incredible songs! Yeah, first time ever I. On your face. Has there ever been a better love song? I mean, that's 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 yeah. typical here in the call, you know. So, so these guys were all emerging, and then all of a sudden, the jazz clubs became folk clubs, and 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 there was lots of folk people around. And who was first? It was it's unimportant. It was there was only a handful of people who were known names. Uh, I was very fortunate. I got onto television very early with nothing to do with music because I was I, I got in as the pet man and I and I, I went on telly in in a, a children's program called Roundup. Roundup was was uh, you know I mean I could name some incredible names that were on Roundup, including believe it or not, 
uh, it was Liam Hood was the producer, and Ingrid, he he came in and apologised to us and said, oh, "I'm bringing this group on, you know, they're way out guys and all the rest of it. They're youngsters, you know, and the kids will probably find it interesting." And it came on. It was the Beatles. Let's meet the Beatles. I've got Paul and and John. John. And Paul's talking to George and Ringo. Well, I said in my intro, and you were listening to it, that there have been a lot of changes since this time last year. Mm. Well, we've seen them, you know, we've seen you making films and doing all sorts of marvellous things, but what have the changes meant to you? Um, 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 uh, nothing really. I think the main changes are, are in people's attitude, attitudes to you. How? I don't know. Um, but it's, it's people who change rather than you. You know, we feel exactly the same, really. Got a new suit, though. <laughs> but you've made a film since then. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. just finished it. Yeah. Uh, Why did you make a film? Well, it's a logical step, isn't it? And it, I believe it's quite lucrative. I believe anyway, it's someone expression. asked us. You know, yeah, we were asked to do it. And we said, yeah. And Alan Owen wrote it, and we changed it, and we're all... It's called A Hard happy. Day's Night. Hard Day's Night. your local night. cinema now. Not now. Not, not now. now. Soon. It was the Beatles. And... and uh, wow. Yeah, and Liam told me later that uh, that their manager, his name escaped me just for the moment, uh, had offered him a 10% share in the Beatles for £100, and Liam had said, oh, you're right. <laughs> on your mind, on your mind, no chance. <laughs> so, so we got people like that, and, uh, and you know, a lot of people that, that came on and... Uh, and went on to become big stars because they used Roundup as a wee introductory thing. So, so I was on there, and of course, uh, it was a, I got to a lot of contacts. So when I eventually decided, I opened folk clubs. I had a lot of folk clubs. I had a folk club running every night of the week at one point, and and uh, and and I would say a couple of them were. You know, legendary folk clubs. So the one down at Arden Capel in Helensburg seems an unlikely place, but you must remember the Fasley Naval Base was just along the road. So we had, we had yeah. all the, the we had all the, the the Americans coming in and and whatnot. And and the Sunday night club it was it was always packed, packed, and we had everybody uh, there. There's there's a record um, of you playing in the Helensborough Club and it's a live record mm -hmm. and I can't remember what you're singing but <laughs> you've got the crowd in the palm of your hand and they're singing with you you're singing um, and it, it, it builds up and builds up and builds up and builds up and then you know and, and it's all part of I mean it, it, it sounds like an incredible atmosphere Oh, there were great atmospheres. There were not, you see, folk clubs that recently, recently, I mean, I'll be 87 this year and I've got time on my hands. So I've been looking in at folk clubs and those who run them are genuine enthusiasts and some of them very talented. But the audiences are terrible because they come in but they don't know how an audience should behave. Well, the big thing about the folk club was we were... We were <laughs> I, love, I love that line. They don't know how an audience should be. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you imagine buying a ticket <laughs> to go and see something and you've got to be away. <laughs> well, no, but you might, I, I take it off. But what I mean by that was we were privileged. We went up there in, in front of them and virtually just led the choir. You used to get five-part harmonies coming off the floor. Now, the, yeah. so a lot of the people didn't have the they didn't have the noose to come up and stand up there in front of people. They'd been a bit nervous, but in the anonymity of maybe two hundred people, you went to very few folk clubs that that, that, that didn't have at least a hundred people in them. So the, the Arden people would have two hundred every Sunday night. And so they knew all the choruses that were waiting on the songs to come along. And they loved when you gave them a new one that they could get their head around. And you would hear people in the street singing these choruses. And, and uh, so you did build up incredible atmosphere. That record that you're talking about was called What a Night. And it was produced by Peter Webb. 
who was a producer up in Grampy and TV. And I mean, now he did a lot of the big TV shows and all the rest of it. But when he came when he came down and saw that, I mean, he was he was mind blowing. He 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 had never never been to anything like that. I've never never heard an audience like that. And and the people would travel from one area to another. And I mean, down there in Helensburgh, we we had the the first the first ever that I know of anyway uh, festival for folk music, and and we invited the English folk clubs to come up, and it was all about folk music, but it was every social activity, and we had well, there was a good story I can tell you a story about that because uh, that Newcastle United had five young guys that went into the local folk club. And they had, well, they had a terrific a cappella sound, five of them, all close harmony. And uh, and they, we were down in that club and we heard them. So the guys went, like, we challenged Scotland to England at football with folk singers. And I said, I've got five Newcastle people there. So, so uh, we had a few contacts as well. So I've got Joe Harper and Derek Johnson. and that. So we ended up with about six or seven of the Scottish team with wigs on and all that. So, <laughs> <laughs> and the five Newcastle guys didn't come up. So <laughs> <laughs> we got hammered then. <laughs> and at the end, and we, had, we put our weirdest guy, who was Danny Kyle. And Danny went in goal. And, and he, there was no one shot on our goal, so it was about 35 to nothing. It was a big puddle of water, so Danny went through himself in the puddle, so it looked like he had played. <laughs> <laughs> Woven into the beat of the drum, the dream of the girl, in the seeds of the child, wafting through the ages, shall the girl.